As we approach the end of the decade, I wanted to make a video to reflect on Tesla's last 10 years. A lot of Tesla enthusiasts don't know much about the early days of the company, so I wanted to go way back before the Model 3 era to figure out what Tesla looked like back in 2009 and look at all the things they've built since then. And the best way to do that is to look back at Tesla's January 2010 S1 filing with the SEC as they prepared to become a public company. Reading this document feels like being transported in a time machine. It, it almost feels like it's a different company entirely. But let's dive into it and first we'll take a look at Tesla's vehicle lineup in 2009. By the end of December 2009, Tesla had sold 937 roadsters to customers in 18 different countries. Now that's not 937,000 cars, that is 900,000 37 cars in company history. That's it. Now fast forward to today and this year Tesla's planning on delivering over 360,000 cars in 2019. So the average day in 2019 Tesla is selling more cars than they did in the entire company's history up until the end of 2009. Just mind-blowing. As far as performance goes, that first Tesla Roadster went 0 to 60 in about 3.9 seconds. In 2009, they came out with another version, the Roadster Sport, that did 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. And today, of course, that would be slower than the top trim level of every single vehicle in Tesla's lineup. All the sedans, the SUV, even the recent Cybertruck that was unveiled, all of them would be faster than the fastest Roadster back in 2009. And even though Tesla was only selling the Roadster back in 2009, they were also working on an early prototype for the Model S. And they actually did an initial unveiling event in March 2009, similar to the Cybertruck event a couple weeks ago. Today we think of the Model S as Tesla's longest range vehicle. It goes 375 miles on a charge. It's the best of the best, but not back in 2009. In 2009, Tesla's vehicle was planned to have a variety of range options from 160 miles to 300 miles. And no company on the planet could get away with offering a premium sedan with just 160 miles of range. But back then, that was way ahead of Tesla's EV competition. In their S1 filing, Tesla actually calls out other automakers for not being able to produce a competitive EV. In 2010, they said, to date, incumbent automobile manufacturers have been unable to commercially produce an electric vehicle with a claimed range in excess of 140 miles. And most vehicles introduced by incumbent automobile manufacturers have had effective ranges of 100 miles or less. So back when Tesla was building the Model S to have a range of 160 to 300 miles, that was totally insane. In 2011, the Nissan Leaf, which was among America's best-selling EVs at the time, only had a range of 117 miles. And as we look back through the years across the EV industry, the one common theme is that Tesla has been the one raising the bar for every other automaker. And while no one has caught the Model S quite yet, the Model S has challenged every other automaker to step up their game and produce better and better EVs. And when it comes to performance, Tesla has been consistently leading the charge there as well. They actually went on the record in 2010 with a prediction of the acceleration for the Model S. They said, as a fully electric vehicle, the Model S will produce zero tailpipe emissions while accelerating from zero to 60 in a targeted time of under six seconds. Of course, there's not a single Tesla built today with a zero to 60 time slower than six seconds. Even the upcoming Tesla Semi has a zero to 60 time of five seconds without a trailer. But again, this is a case of Tesla pushing the limits of what every other EV maker thought to be possible. The 2011 Nissan Leaf, had a zero to 60 time of 9.9 .9 seconds. The 2014 Volkswagen e-Golf couldn't even break the 10 second barrier. But now it's hardly impressive when EV makers come out saying their cars are gonna go zero to 60 in four or five seconds. Tesla has raised that bar so much higher. The performance bar is now set at 2.3 seconds. And it didn't happen overnight, but over the course of 10 years, this consistent innovation has led Tesla to become the standard in both EV range and EV performance. Now let's talk about financials. Back in 2009, Tesla did a reveal event for the upcoming Model S, similar to what they did with the Cybertruck a few weeks ago. And from it, they earned 2,000 customer deposits, each worth $5,000. So that's $10 million up front to finance the development of the car. It's not a bad deal, but it's nothing in comparison to the $700 million of deposits Tesla had on hand prior to Model 3 development. And the 2,000 customer deposits, it's kind of funny to look back at. I mean, now we have the Cybertruck, which just got 250,000 customer deposits, and we still have Wall Street analysts panicking over fears of no demand. But this explosion in customer demand and the general hype behind Tesla as a company, it almost didn't happen. I mean, Elon has talked a lot about how Tesla in the early days, it almost failed. 
but this S1 filing from 2010 really illustrates that well. It says, we have incurred significant losses and have used approximately 173 million of cash in operations through September 2009. As of September 2009, we had approximately $106 million in cash and cash equivalents. So in the development of the Tesla Roadster, Tesla used up almost twice as much money as it had left over in its bank account. They did end up securing a $465 million loan from the DOE, but without that, it's very difficult to imagine Tesla being around today. Back in those 2009 and 2010 years, Tesla was actually spending $2 for every $1 in revenue it was generating. In short, the company was bleeding cash and it was happening fast. But now Tesla's cash bleeding story has lost its appeal even among Tesla bears. I mean, the company has $5 billion of cash on hand, it's been profitable in three of the last five quarters, and free cash flow positive in four of the last five. And as interesting as it is to look back on Tesla's vehicle performance and company financials over the last 10 years and observe how the company has changed through the decade, I'm just scratching the surface here. There are so many more important changes that have happened throughout the company that I just can't cover in one single video. I mean, this was a team of just 514 employees at the end of 2009. There were just 71 people in the vehicle design and engineering department. But now the Tesla team's grown to almost 50,000 people, a jump of 100x, and they're building all sorts of cool products. I mean, they built the Fremont factory, the Gigafactory in Buffalo, the Gigafactory in Nevada, the Gigafactory in China. They built a solar business. They built an energy storage business. They also added some incredible features to Tesla's cars. They added an interior touchscreen. They added autopilot, 360 degree cameras, supercharging, the list goes on and on and on. And for almost all of these features and ideas and products, these are things that Tesla has pioneered and that almost every other automaker is trying to copy. So to be honest, I find it difficult to even think about what the EV development landscape might look like today if Tesla had not made it through its difficult early years in 2008, 2009. But luckily we won't have to find out. So to anyone at Tesla who may be watching this video, I just wanna say thank you for pushing EV adoption forward in the last decade. I just got myself a Model 3 a few months ago and it's a beast. I can't wait to see what you guys build in the 2020s.